It's Bible time. <gasps> it's Bible time. It's Bible time. It's, it's Bible, Bible time. time. <gasps> it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's, it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's Bible time with Aunt JJ. That's me. Get your Bible if you have one, because it's time to study the Bible together. The Bible is God's Word. God helped me write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. We've been reading about how God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. Jesus lived a perfect life. He invited people to follow Him. He did miracles. He taught the people about God and about living for God. One of the things Jesus taught about was the lost. Have you ever lost something? Maybe you lost a toy, your brush, or a book. Maybe it was a special gift someone gave you, or a favorite blanket. Maybe it was something you loved to sleep with every night. I'm going to show you a picture of some things. See if you can find the lost things. See if you can find the sheep. Where is it? Can you find it? Can you find the coin? Where is it? Can you find it? Did you find the sheep and the coin? If you did, you might have been happy about it. But if you didn't, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. If you found them or not, it doesn't make a big difference in your life because these pictures aren't really important. But in life, if you lost something that was important to you, you would probably look really hard for it and you would probably be really excited when you found it. You may have rejoiced when you found it. Jesus told some parables about lost things. These parables are stories about things on earth that teach about heaven or God's kingdom. I'm going to read from the book of Luke. Luke is the third book in the New Testament and is the book of the Gospels. The Gospels record the good news of Jesus' life on earth as a man. Luke records true things that really happened with real people. As I read my own paraphrase of Luke 15, verses 1 through 21, listen for the words lost, found, and rejoice. When you hear the words lost, found, and rejoice, jump up and repeat the words after me. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the experts in the law were complaining. They said, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them a parable. He said, Suppose one of you has 100 sheep and loses one of them. Wouldn't he leave the 99 in the open country? Won't he go look for the one lost sheep until he finds it? When he has found it, he joyfully places it on his shoulders. When he gets home, he calls his friends and neighbors together. He says to them, Rejoice with me. I have found my sheep that was lost. I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven when one sinner repents from sin than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the house? Won't she search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together. She says, Rejoice with me. I have found the coin that I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents from sin. Then Jesus said, A man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the family property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. A few days later, the younger son picked up all he had. He left on a trip to a country far away. There, he wasted his money on wild living. He spent everything he had. Then there wasn't enough food in the whole country. The son didn't have what he needed. So he went to work for someone who lived in that country. That person sent the son to the fields to feed pigs. The son wanted to eat the food the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he began to think clearly again. He said, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food? But here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way from home, his father saw him and his heart went out to him. He ran and hugged his son and kissed him. His son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, 
Hurry, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, put sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. The son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Did you hear the words lost, found, and rejoice? Jesus said them several times in the parables. The Pharisees and the experts of the law looked down on sinners and tax collectors and didn't like that Jesus spent time with them and ate food with them. Jesus told stories about things the people could understand, but the stories were really about how God loves people and sent Jesus to save them. The person had lost a sheep. He cared about the sheep, and so he searched for it. When he found it, he rejoiced. The woman had lost a coin. She cared about the coin, and so she looked for it, and when she found it, she rejoiced. The father let the son leave when he wanted to leave. The son was lost. But when he returned home, he was found. The father was gracious and merciful. He rejoiced with a celebration. When people repent from their sins and turn to Jesus, heaven rejoices. When we talk about lost people, we are often talking about people who do not have personal relationships with God. When they are saved by grace through faith in Jesus, they are found and heaven rejoices. Sometimes, like with the parable about the son, lost people can be people who have been saved, they are children of God, but they have turned away from living for God and are living their own way. When they repent from their sins and turn back to following God, they are found and heaven rejoices. God loves everyone. He loves the lost people who do not have personal relationships with Him. He loves His children even when they turn away from following Him. And when the lost turn to God, He responds with mercy and grace. There is rejoicing when the lost are found. In fact, God loves us so much, He sent Jesus to seek and save the lost, even though that meant Jesus was going to die on a cross to pay the penalty for our sins. Luke 19, 10 says, The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The Son of Man is Jesus. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Let's memorize Luke 19.10 by singing it. The song goes like this. The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19.10 I was lost, but I'm found by grace through faith in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, now sing it with me. Son of man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19:10. I was lost, but I'm found by grace through faith in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's start singing it again, but this time we'll sing it in groups. I'll start singing and then you start singing. Join in a different group when they start singing. So follow along and sing the song through to the end. Men Great job singing with me. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Have you been found by grace through faith in Jesus? Do you trust in Him and live for Him? Now it's time for Eyes on Him, the part of our lesson when we focus on what the scriptures say about God. When you say to the Bible, look for what the scripture reveals or shows about God, then think about how that knowledge of God should impact, change, matter to your life. I see that God loves everyone. God loves us so very much, He sent Jesus to seek and save us. I see that God is merciful. That means God kindly does not give us what we deserve. We deserve to pay for our sins, but God is merciful. 
He had Jesus pay for our sins so we can be forgiven by grace through faith in Jesus. I see that God is gracious. That means God gives us good things we don't deserve. Sending Jesus to save us was gracious. Wanting us to come to Him is gracious. Letting us do this Bible study together is gracious. I could go on and on about God's grace because He is so incredibly gracious. What else does this passage show you about God? How should you live differently because of who God is? And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder! The time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on purple. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, can I be so lost that God doesn't love me? Sweet friend, absolutely not. God loves you no matter what you do. He loves you because of who He is, not because of who you are or what you do. Think about the son in the parable Jesus told. He didn't want to be with his father anymore. He took his share of his father's property and left his father. He lived wildly until he had wasted everything his father had given him. The father didn't stop loving the son. The father ran to the son and celebrated when he returned. Do not believe the lies that your sin cannot be forgiven or that your sin is so great that God doesn't love you. God loves you no matter what you do. You cannot change that fact. When you turn away from your sins and turn to God, you will be received with mercy and grace. God loves you and wants you to come to Him. He already made the way for you to be forgiven and to be made right with Him. Now is the time to turn to God. By grace, through faith in Jesus, you can be forgiven. God cares about the lost. He loves everyone and wants everyone to be saved. He sent Jesus to seek and to save the lost. Jesus gave His life so you can be saved. That's how much God loves you. He sent His only Son to suffer and die for your sins. Come to Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. By grace, through faith in Jesus, you can be saved. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us mercy and grace, even though we turn away from you. Please give us the grace to turn from our sins and turn to you. Please help us to understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I love studying God's Word with you today. There's no better time than Bible time, and I hope you will join me next time for Bible Time with Aunt JJ. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and go to BibleTimeWithAuntJJ.com for free activities that go along with today's Bible study. It's Bob's time with Aunt Jay Jay.